Well, hello there, dear viewers, and welcome back to another episode of Scooter Trash Stories. I'm your host, Warhorse. <laughs> Got the nose because they were selling them for orphan kids or some shit when I went shopping. Anyway, I thought a good intro, you know. Anyway, Friday the 13th, a biker's lucky day. Well, for most of us, maybe. I don't know. It is for me. In either case, uh, yeah, I wanted to mention, you know, when I was going over all, all my little notes there, I've made that uh, stories about uh, riding and back in the day and back in the 70s and 80s. And, you know, it, it occurred to me that <laughs> every, every story almost uh, uh, has women involved that are causing drama, stress, misery, total chaos, and it's always about women, one way or another. And, uh, yeah, it, it just kind of hit me like a, like a ton of bricks, even when I was, uh, I, I guess, you know, not in a relationship or an ongoing thing, you know, uh, the the one night stands, and I guess to be fair, you know, we call it riding the cock carousel when the women are doing it. I guess I was riding the pussy carousel and uh, doing the one night stands and all that kind of shit. Even with them, man, it seemed like uh, you know there was always some kind of drama involved, and uh, whenever I didn't have a woman in my life, things were going really well, you know, uh, yeah, it's food for thought, you know, in any, any case, yeah, let's get back to the, to the, uh, to the tall tales here, or tales of, uh, the 70s, and where were we last time? I can't remember now. Oh yeah, we were lesbian at the tuna bar with the, uh, all right. So anyway, I got I got rid of her, uh, and uh, started uh, chasing after this redheaded heroin addict. Um, I didn't. She was a high functioning addict. I didn't know uh, she was that bad, but I wasn't uh, living with her at the time. It was just kind of a dating thing, and uh, I want. Excuse me. Sinuses. I tell you what, man, pollen is bad here now. Anyway, so uh, I was riding with a bunch of guys one night, and we were going. Now this is back to the draft house uh, in Davie, and uh, we're we're all going down there. Uh, you know, the place, uh, the draft house was a pretty big place, and I guess they had about oh, I don't know, maybe eight. 10 pool tables in there, uh, you know, so it was kind of a, it was mainly a biker crowd at the time, uh, there were some of the guys in Davy. Davy was kind of more cowboy country, you know, uh, back then, uh, so you had a lot of the, the uh, cowboy type guys, you know, coming in there, and, uh, for the most part, everybody got along, you know, it was no big deal, but it was, uh, pretty much bikers, and then, you know, Occasionally somebody else would show up. So anyway, about seven of us ride up to the draft house to have a drink. We got there probably around 11, uh, 12 o'clock. We'd already been to a couple other bars, so we had a pretty good buzz on. And uh, I was standing out front with two guys and all the bikes. I mean, there, there were probably about 30 choppers, you know, all Harleys, all backed in, uh, pretty tight, uh, to where you could stand your bike up, but there wasn't much room left or right uh, other than that. And, uh, you know, everybody's in the bar except a couple of us out there. And uh, here comes this younger guy, kind of clean-shaven, wearing, uh, you know, just regular street clothes, and he's riding a, a 250 chap bike or whatever. You know, I don't remember what, what it was. 
and uh, he comes pulling up and he kind of he, he goes past all the bikes and he's looking I can tell he was looking for a place to park and now the parking spot a lot was bigger you know where cars could park off to the end and uh, you know basically he could have parked at the end of where the bikes ended I think there was room down there but now what does he do you know he turns around he comes back about midway and he wedges his bike in between the all the Harleys sitting there and I'm thinking to myself you know my god is this guy out of his mind yeah and uh, nobody's gonna be able to get on their bike or stand it up because he is so tight in there and uh, I thought, you know, this isn't going to go good <laughs> for him. And uh, I went in the bar and I told you know, a couple of my buddies there that uh, you guys got to come out here and see what this goofball just did. And he walked right in the bar, you know, walked past us and he, he went in there and uh, I guess ordered a beer or whatever and started shooting pool or I don't know. So uh, a couple of the other guys that I didn't know that were there, you know, bikers, they, they kind of heard it too about the parking job <laughs> and uh, you know we all kind of go walking out and that was back in the day you could take a beer out you know up front and you know just kind of stand out in front of the place and uh, so nothing much was thought of a bunch of guys walking outside plus a lot of people would go outside smoke a joint you know that kind of shit so uh, we're standing out there and we're looking at the bike you know and we're thinking, you know, well, what do we do with this now? You know, uh, how, this this kid has got to got. Well, he wasn't a kid, kid, but he was younger. And uh, yeah, all of a sudden, uh, one of these other guys, he's up on the roof with another guy, two guys on the roof now, and he yells down, and he's, uh, you know, it was one of those roofs with a phony like. Uh, uh, front if you want to call it that you know with a little angle to it with what looked like tiles but they weren't and then the roof was right there so these guys are standing right there and I said hand the bike up here <laughs> we're like what you know are you fucking crazy and he's like no no really yeah so uh, a couple of the other guys that they were with you know they went over there that they moved the bike up onto the little sidewalk area and they picked it up, the two of them picked it up pretty damn good, you know, and they had it about halfway up, which meant they had to get it up over their head for these guys to reach the bike. So we're standing out there, and we're like, okay, fuck it, you know, we'll do this. <laughs> so uh, we gave them a hand, you know, we got the bike up, and it's kind of leaning against the building so the fucker wouldn't fall over. The guys on top, they grabbed the bike, they put it right, right at the edge, sitting sideways you know put it on the kickstand and there it sat sat right up on the roof <laughs> so anyway we had a good joke about that you know we're all laughing and uh we walked back in the bar you know went about our business but uh we kind of kept an eye on the kid to see when he was leaving you know and uh there were a couple people out front and uh, yeah, he finally goes out there to leave, and it's probably about one o'clock in the morning by now. So uh, uh, he goes outside, you know, and uh, one of the guys that was out there, he, he, hey, hey, anybody in here know what happened to this guy's bike? You know, did you see his bike? And or uh, now, nah, now, nah, what? You know, we started off going to the door, and you know, kind of chuckling because we know what's about to happen. So, uh, one of the guys asking him, you know, where'd you park it? Where'd you leave it? You know, did you leave the key in it? Did you, you know, got them all riled up and shit. And, you know, one of the guys just walking nonchalantly kind of out in the parking lot. Turns around, puts his fingers in his pocket, you know, holds the beer. He says, hey, did you park your bike on the roof? The kid's like, no, I didn't park the bike on the roof. And he... Yeah, you know, everybody starts looking at the roof, and the kid looks up at the roof, and he says, How the fuck did my bike get up there? How the hell am I going to get that down and shit? <laughs> Gee, I don't know, dude. Maybe you better learn how to park your bike. <laughs> and about that time, almost everybody just 
either went back in the bar or they got on their bike and they left. Uh, I think I went back like a couple days later and I talked to uh, the bar mate there and she says, yeah, the guy's bike was up on the roof and I think uh, he called a towing company and somebody else and they couldn't get it down for him. <laughs> and she says, I don't know how he got it down, but it's not there anymore. So anyway, that was one of those stupid stories about, uh, you know, uh, kind of jokey shit that we pulled back then. You know, and most of these stories, I mean, th this is all mild shit. You know, if I went into the heavy heavy stories of some real, uh, you know, drama that was caused back then between clubs, you know, other bikers and, uh, you know, things that happened. I mean, I, I really, I, I couldn't do it without mentioning everything involved and I don't feel that's right, you know. Uh, so, and I'd have to kind of mention names and I can't make up enough names to kind of remember. <clears throat> yeah, who they are. <clears throat> I know uh, a little earlier on, there used to be a bunch of us that rode together. About had seven, ten of us that always rode together. Uh, you know, some of us eventually went to clubs, others didn't, but we always kind of held, held together, you know. We had a, a, a bigger crowd. This was like more of a little clique, you know. And, uh, of course, there were the, the people we knew uh, peripherally that uh, were also kind of part of the group, but they weren't really in our little group. So uh, I remember one night we're, uh, we're sitting at uh, this one big Italian dude's uh, mobile home, and... Uh, he, uh, he was a good guy, man, but, uh, if you ever got him pissed off, he could be vicious. I mean, very vicious. And, uh, you know, he, uh, like I said, good guy. Uh, I'm glad he was on my side and I was on his, but, uh, we were sitting there at this, uh, we were in a mobile home park, and it was at his mobile home, and we're sitting there, we're, we're watching, uh, Saturday Night Live. And we're doing lines, you know. Uh, and all of a sudden, we we hear a big crash out front. I'm like, Holy fuck! What was that? You know, half the people grabbing their guns, and you know, <laughs> uh, it was that that whole time back then when having a gun was a good thing. I mean, like on you all the time. And uh, so one of you know, we we walk out there and what's going on, we don't see much of anything, you know, it's a mobile home park, the streets are narrow, you know, well, not narrow, you can get two cars by, and uh, one, of, one of the guys that came that night, he wasn't on the bike, he had his pickup truck there, that was a beautiful pickup, black Chevy something or other, chrome bumpers, you know, the whole nine yards, and he parked it right on, on the grass, on the property, but kind of close to the road, maybe about two or three feet away from the road. They parked it lengthwise. Well, we walked around the truck and we saw a VW Beetle, the old VW Beetle, the whole fender hanging off of the back of his bumper, on the back bumper. I guess they, they hit the, the side of the truck until the bumper caught the, the fender now, what was it? I think it was the front fender. Pretty sure. Anyway, it was one of the fenders. They caught it and ripped it right off the bug. So, uh, you know, it bent the shit out of the bumper really bad and uh, kind of scratched the shit out of the paint job towards the back of the bed. And uh, we're like, wow, what the fuck? You know, was, we got on the bikes, we rode around in the mobile home park figuring. How hard could it be to find a beetle with, with a missing fender? So uh, we didn't find him. We went back, you know. And he'd hopped in his uh, truck. He says, I'm going to go up to the, uh, what was it? One for the Road, I think it was. It was the local bar that we hung out at. And uh, that was, you know, it was 
mostly a biker bar, but a lot of other people went in there. And that was another place that had probably eight pool tables in it. So a lot of people went there to shoot pool. And uh, anyway, he says, I'm going to drive over there and see if maybe, you know, drive around and see if I can see this beetle. And there were some apartment complexes nearby, too. So uh, about 15 minutes later, we get a call from him. And he says, hey, the beetle's over here at the bar. I said, okay, we'll be right there. So we loaded up. We went in end of the bar, and uh, now we we knew the bouncer, you know, he was kind of a short, stocky guy and everything, and, uh, you know, he probably could have handled one of us, but not all of us, you know, and we were out to, to even the score here, so uh, the big Italian one, he goes over, we see him at the pool table, you know, I think somebody said, hey, who owns that beetle out there? And, you know, I go, yeah, we do. And there were probably, I'd say about six of them and one chick. Uh, that's about right. And that little group playing pool. So, uh, the big Italian walks over and he, he says, who owns a beetle? And a punk-ass idiot turns around and he says, I do. What the fuck is it to you? Man, and I mean in a blink of an eye, the Italian, he grabbed him by the throat, one-handed, picked him up off the ground, flung him up in the air, brought him down on the pool table, it body slammed with one arm. I mean, and this wasn't a little guy. You could feel the ground shake, you know. About this time, you know, the rest of the punks are kind of not knowing whether they should start shit, and you know, we were all leathered out, and uh, you know, we were packing with, I mean, everything. So, uh, one guy got a little bit of a mouth on him, and one of the other guys, he just kind of backhanded, bitch slapped him, you know, and shut the fuck up. So, uh, the big Italian, he drags this guy, he just, uh, by the throat, he's still got him by the fucking throat. And he drags him off the pool table, and he's dragging him out the front door. About now, the bouncer's, you know, getting into it, trying to calm the shit down. And uh, the guy that owned the pickup truck, now he was a little Italian guy, <laughs> you know, little, little guy. And he, uh, he goes... Uh, and pushes the bouncer <laughs> out of the way. Now, this guy, he always had a, uh, I think it was a 44 or 45 Magnum that he carried on a holster, and it was the long barrel one. So, you know, you got to pull it up and, I mean, stupid as shit, but anyway. So he pushes the bouncer, and the bouncer gets, you know, like, ready to nail him. He's trying to get a goddamn gun. A couple of the other guys, they, they break it up, you know, they tell them about it, hey, let's leave it, we've taken it outside the bar, you know, and uh, the big Italian still got the guy by the throat, you know, and he, he's cleaning out the guy's pockets, he says, well, oh, I got your wallet, got your money, he says, this isn't enough to pay for it, he says, I've got your license, I'm keeping it and shit, you know, you call here at the bar and tell us when you have the money to pay for what you did, and, I mean, the guy wasn't talking much now. And uh, so uh, the broad decides she's going to get a big mouth now. And, of course, she, I'm standing right between her and the big Italian guy who's got, I guess, her boyfriend. And uh, I turn around, and she's kind of walking real fast, you know, got that mouth going and, you know, cussing like a sailor and everything else. And uh, what gives you fucking bikers a right and shit and... All I did, I, I put my hand up like that. I didn't hit her or push her. I just, I just put my hand up as she walked into it. And it was the funniest goddamn thing. Her feet came off the ground with a forward motion, came up like that, and she went plop on her ass. And she looked up and it, like that had never happened to her. And, you know, how dare anybody... And, uh, you know, that kind of ended her tirade. Uh, so that was another night, you know. Uh, the guy finally did 
uh, come to the bar again, and he did pay the guy with the truck for the damages. Uh, I think somebody threatened him, not that I heard it, but that if he didn't come by, we had his license, we knew where he lived and who he was and everything, that uh, things wouldn't go well for him if he didn't cough up the money. So, yeah, stupid shit like that happened. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, next, uh, next little installment of uh, biker trash talk here. <laughs> <laughs> the new uh, a parody on Pops is live from Biker Trash Talk you know, or live from the garage uh, maybe I'll get into uh, uh, the redhead uh, you know with the knives and her with pulling guns on me and shit and, uh, then after that a little, little stint for me and Florida State University otherwise known as the Gray Bar Hotel, and uh, then off into my second marriage, and things get real calm uh, during my second marriage. So the, uh, the wild stories, if I can think of any more that I can tell, I'll, I'll try to bring them up, but uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is uh, probably going to be the second to the last one that I'll make on this subject, and uh, Realistically, I don't know uh, what else, you know, this weekend I'm hoping to, to go, well, I'll be going to the doghouse Saturday, tomorrow, uh, for lunch and a couple beers, but we've done that ride already, I've, I've filmed that ride going there, that's fairly straight and everything, and I've uh, been wanting to make a ride going out to Sleepy Hollow, which is in uh, Floral City, uh, nice curvy, windy road going into the swamps there. It's uh, probably only about two miles long, if that. Um, I'm pretty sure they're still open. I haven't been there in very, very many years because they did close down, got a new owner. I haven't been back since. It's just kind of a dangerous road with a lot of drunk yahoos on it. Uh, especially guys that don't know how to ride and they come into the curves too sharp and their hairpin turns. So uh, I might do a video of that if the weather's going to hold out for Sunday. Uh, might go over there and uh, do a little show and tell, you know, what the place looks like, uh, the road, and do a ride video. So anyway, that should do it for this time, and uh, I'm going to wear my nose for the poor orphan children. <laughs> Adios, guys. Be good.